welcome to another episode of Talking to Myself. I'm your host, Jake Letizia, and this is the podcast where I look into a camera and I talk to myself. Hello, how's it going? How you doing? Hope you're doing good. I'm doing okay, dude. I'm a little bit annoyed. It took me um, a long-ass time to start recording today because... Uh, I, the 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 podcast I don't know if you noticed if you've been watching it the past two times it's very green and uh, I don't know why it's so fucking green and I've been trying to make it not green because uh, green is the color of puke and so aesthetically it's not that pleasing to 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 see me or anyone in a puke colored tint so I'm trying to get rid of that and. Uh, I hope I hope on this current episode, I think I fixed the problem. But if I didn't, then I'm going to fucking shoot myself in the head. If I didn't figure it out and I in fa- you in fact see a green tint on my face and in the room right now, just, <clears throat> just know it'll be the last episode. Because after I upload it, I will be uh, tying a noose and hanging myself. <laughs> No, I'm kidding, dude. I'm kidding, dude. I won't do that, dude. That's not who I am, dude. That's not who I am. I have felt suicidal in the past, but right now I don't feel that way, even though the green is making me fucking want to die, dude. Um, How you doing? How's it going? Hope everything's going well. Uh, Felt like I was going to have a heart attack today. Like a couple hours ago. I think I'm just out of shape, dude. I think I'm just crazy out of shape. I think I just really need... And you know how I know it's true, dude? I accidentally just whistled. Did you hear that whistle? If you heard that whistle, you know. If, if you accidentally whistle, I've learned this. I've learned this because two different times I went to go say something and I whistled. And then afterwards I was like, you know what? The whistle is God telling me it's the right thing to do. <laughs> but uh, I just whistled with my teeth accidentally. When I was talking about getting in shape, I need to get in shape. I started eating healthier and that's made me lose some weight. But now I need to, uh, you know, uh, eating healthier makes you breathe better only so much. You know, you got to actually build up your cardio so that when I go up six flights of stairs, I'm getting old, man. I'm getting old, dude. It used to be that that I would never work out. And I'm 26 and I haven't worked out in five years and I walk up a couple flights of stairs and I'm crushing it, dude. But now at 31, dude, I don't work out ever. And then I walk up six flights of stairs and my body goes, you're dying. (laughs) Hey, man, you don't recover as well anymore. Okay, you don't have the the young juice, bro. The young juice that makes you just be fine, even though you're exerting yourself suddenly, you know. When you're 26, you can quickly get up and move around. When you're 31, your body goes, whoa, 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 we don't do that, bro. We haven't done that in a while. You've you've created a habit and we're sticking to it, dude. Don't change the plans, bro. If, if we're on a vacation and I'm expecting to stay in my room, if you suddenly take me on a hike, I'm going to be pissed off, dude. I'm trying to take my body on a hike when it wants to play video games. I got to ease it back in. I got to, I got to, I got to get a little, uh, I got to start running or something, dude. I got to figure it out. But, uh, what's going on in the world? <laughs> we picked a new guy, dude. We picked a new guy, dude. Not all of us. We all didn't pick him. But, you know, he's the guy now, dude. He's the new one. He's the new person who does that now. The new the new prez. The new and old prez. Dude, I can't stop thinking about how, how crazy it must feel to, like, call up... Donald Trump as Joe Biden and be like, congrats on winning. Even though you still don't admit that I beat you. (laughs) That's got to be crazy, dude. He must have. I wonder. I want to hear that tape, dude. Give us that tape, dude. Because I want to know. I want to know 
if number one behind the scenes, Donald is like, no, bro, you won. Listen, listen, I got to say what I got to say to keep people happy, to keep people thinking I'm, you know, unbeatable. But between you and me, you won. I want to know if he if he conceded on that phone call or if there was some some attempts from Joe Biden to be like, hey, so good job on the win. You know, winning is pretty good, dude. You know, sometimes yeah, everyone got to, has their wins and losses, you know, you know, it's, it's great. It's congrat. You know, I don't, I don't know if I, I didn't personally vote for you or maybe he did, dude, dude, that's a conspiracy online that Biden uh, voted for Trump. I think it's a conspiracy. I don't, I don't believe the conspiracy, but I mean, it is funny. It is funny if that's true. Dude, nowadays I feel like everyone just believes in the funniest thing. Honestly, dude, I feel like people vote for the funniest thing. They believe in the funniest thing. I feel like funny is just what what happens, dude. I think if Joe Biden wasn't as hilarious as he was, people wouldn't have voted for him. <laughs> like being being the president is a TV show in our country now, and and I feel like people vote for the show, dude. But at the end of the day, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. And I'm sick of people who are ill-equipped uh, to talk about it, breaking it down, dude. I'm sick of I, I'm sick of seeing comedians be like, let's do an autopsy on the election. Why, dude? We're we make jokes, dude. We make jokes. We're idiots, dude. We have moments of, of intelligence, but what what do we... <laughs> I don't know, dude. I've been annoyed this week. I've been annoyed just hearing people. Everyone's breaking things down and everyone's acting like they either knew or they had no idea or here's why. This is what everyone in the world thinks. Bro, shut up. <laughs> do you know? I don't think you know, dude. People on the news being like, this is what this says about everything. I don't think you fucking know, dude. I don't. I think very little people can concisely explain how the country feels. <laughs> That's kind of a complex thing to describe. And I definitely think you can't figure out and describe exactly what happened during an election 14 hours after it happened. Dude, what happened to people taking a second and then figuring it out? Jay-Z said about albums, he was like, if you reviewed my album the day after it came out, who gives a fuck about what you said? I'm paraphrasing, but he was basically like, it took me like, uh, it takes me a year to realize the genius of an album sometimes. How can you, how can you really dissect it in a day? And it's true, dude. That election was extremely historic and complicated and crazy. And people 10 hours later are like, this is what happened. What? You don't know, dude. And that's okay. We shouldn't know. We don't know. Dude, what happened to not knowing and then thinking? <laughs> what happened to not being sure and then thinking for a long time and then figuring it out? I feel like that doesn't happen much anymore. I feel like it's just a lot of like, nah, I'm, this is what's happening right now. And if I'm wrong, well, then I'll fix it later. I'll fix it later and it won't matter. There'll be a lot of damage done, but who cares? I need to say something now because that's what we do. I need to say some shit right. Dude, think before you speak. What happened to that, dude? I miss it. I miss think before you speak, dude. Dude, people talk to me and I can tell them like, you're not thinking about anything, dude. You're just saying bullshit. And some and some will hear me say this and be like, kind of, <clears throat> kind of ironic because this guy's just talking to himself. <laughs> it's true, dude. Even me, I'm guilty of it. And then I feel bad. I try not to do it. I try to think before I speak, dude. I but even before I get on this podcast, I try to think about what do I really want to fucking talk about. Of course, I'm going to say some shit off the cuff and I'll probably sound like an asshole, but I, I'm part of the problem, dude. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem, too. 
I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. What, what the fuck am I going to, you know? I don't know. I, I, I've I been th just feeling real negative and weird lately, dude. I've been feeling real like, what the fuck do they know? <laughs> just about anybody, dude. What the fuck does he know? He, she doesn't know what she's saying, dude. I'm feeling very much like my dad, dude. And I'm trying to suppress it, dude. I feel like as you get older, it's it's just a fight to not be your father, dude. It's just a fight to suppress the 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 bad qualities that are in your DNA. And one of those bad qualities is a constant feeling of like, shut the fuck up. And the reason why it gets hard is because there's a lot of times when shut the fuck up is a good thing, but it's not good 99% of the time. 99% of the time going shut the fuck up is just is just only me talking which is what's happening right now and and that can't be real life <laughs> only me talking can be for an hour on this thing but it can't be 24 7 you know so i've been trying to quell that they don't know what they're talking about I don't know. Even right now, I don't. I feel like everything I'm saying doesn't really make any sense. But you get what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, dude, imagine if you won the election and then the guy who won the next time is the guy who said you didn't win and then you got to congratulate him. <laughs> it's just a crazy move, dude. It's just crazy. It's just it's just insane. It's an ins it's. I can't imagine being Joe Joe uh, Joe Brandon, dude. I can't Im imagine being big sleepy Brandon, dude. Dude, he should have embraced Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe is like a sick nickname, dude. Dude, everyone's sleepy as hell, dude. That's that's a very relatable thing. Sleepy Joe, dude. But when he wakes up, dude, he crushes it. That's what that's how he should have reframed it. I'm sleepy as hell, but when I wake up, bro, I fucking destroy the world, dude, in a good way. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Dude, it's, it is, it is, it, dude, it's fascinating, like, with, 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 with Biden in particular, you really got to see, like, like, how much the pressure of being president, like, physically and mentally affects a human being, because he's so old that, like, he couldn't take the pressure of being, like, the, the pressure of being president literally made him incoherent and, 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 and like sound like he was on the verge of death and then literally the moment he dropped out every time we've seen him in public he's pretty articulate he's chilling he's up he's chipper i'm like bro this this guy this is the guy who won the first time <laughs> you know just the weight of every decision, you know? Every time you give weapons to another country, you're like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> every, every weapon you give to another country is a sentence you can't fully say, dude. That's what it is. That's why you can't have too old of a president. Because their brain needs to be young enough to be old. <laughs> A president in the White House is 20 years older than he actually is at all times because of the mental stress of of all of the country being on your shoulders. So what happens is, you know, Joe Biden was physically 78 or whatever he was, but 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 mentally and and, um, and uh, emotionally, he was a 90 seven years old nah he was like 102 he was like 102 years old and then the moment they were like it's Kamala bro he was like bro I'm 74 dude I'm fuck I lost a couple of years dude or I gained a couple of years dude I daylight savings my life dude anyway um I hope on the phone he admitted it, dude. Come on, you got it. Come on, dude. Come on. That's the thing. If I was Joe Biden and that was on the phone, I would leak it out, dude. I would leak it to the press. If if I got Trump to be like, I actually did lose, I would leak that shit immediately and be like, that's right, bitch. That's right, you bitch. <laughs> that's right, you pussy. 
I won, dude. <laughs> he big dogs him. He alphas him, dude. That's right, bro. I'm the I'm <laughs> I'm not Brandon anymore, dude. Joe Brandon leaks call about Donnie Trump admitting he lost the election. Joe Brand, dude, Brand, Joe Brandon was such a good. We gotta come up with a with some sort of a a Donald, you know, because Brandon is is funny. It's like so stupid. It's funny. Drumpf was no good, dude. Drumpf was weak as fuck, dude. Donald, you gotta call him like uh, what's it called? You gotta call him like um, Greg, dude. <laughs> That would be a power move, dude. If whoever, dude, if if Democrats, if people who did not like Trump start calling him Greg, dude, that I think that'd be pretty funny. You got to have just some sort of alternate D. What are some other D names? Donald, Donnie. There's not a lot of D names. Dommel. Not Greg. I feel like if you call him Greg, just like a reporter, someone in the Senate, someone, well... Just saw. I I I wonder if that would make him mad if someone just kept calling him Greg. That reminds me of when uh, someone was calling Andrew Cuomo Fredo or Chris Cuomo Fredo. That's a that's a that's a fucking. That was years ago, dude. But that was upsetting, dude. That was upsetting. That was it was upsetting how upset Chris Cuomo was getting. Chris Cuomo was like acting like it was an Italian slur being said to him because he was called Fredo. That's what you need though, dude. You need to do something really stupid that upsets somebody. That's how you that's how you you win a debate. That's how you win an argument. That's how you that's how you just like ulti you win ultimately, dude. That's how you become a Chad, bro. <laughs> that's the most alpha move you can do. People talk about being alpha all the time. There's all these fucking alpha bros out there trying to be the most alpha Chad giga fuck in the world. That's how you get him, dude. That's why a lot of these jacked dudes who are like, you got to be alpha. I'm like, you're not alpha, dude. Because if I called you a pe if I called you penis face, you'd lose your mind, dude. If you lose your mind being called the the dumbest thing of all time, you can't. You're not an alpha, dude. You're just a you're just a short guy who got jacked. <laughs> a lot of these alpha dudes, dude, they're just short guys who got jacked, bro. They're just short dudes who are really angry and they got jacked, and now they're trying to trick you into them being tall, dude. Dude, there's so many short jacked dudes who are trying to act like they're taller than you. They're not, dude. They're still short. They're still short fucking idiots, dude. Honestly, if you get jacked and you're short, you become shorter in my mind, dude. You become fucking... If you're 5'6 and jacked, you're you're 4'11 to me, dude. The wider you are, the shorter you look. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Dude, the line between um, compassion and like, or empathy and irritation is so razor thin, dude. It's so razor thin. I fully, I was on the subway today uh, coming home from work and this dude was on, was just lying there, which whenever there's a dude lying there, it's a, it's a, it's a story you, you want told to you, you know, it's a, it's a curiosity. It's like everyone was looking at this guy being like, how did he end up here? You know, every time you see a guy sleeping on the train, it's a story that you, you kind of want to be told. And this guy was lying on the train and he was like, really just like out of it, like arm out. He looked strung out for a second. But he wasn't moving at all. And there was like a, like a bottle of um, iced tea that kept hitting into my foot and into his hand. It was like rolling between his hand and my foot. 
And this guy wasn't moving at all, and his phone was out. Like, all there were all these elements that made you be like, is this guy dead? For some reason, his phone being out, ready to be taken, really made me feel like this guy might be dead. And the more people looked over, the more I feel like everyone was kind of being like, is this guy fucking dead? Is he dead, or is he nodding off on drugs? Or is he just really tired? <laughs> I don't think it's the really tired thing. But none of us know, and also it's New York, so no, no one no one knows what to do. Like, no one knows how to help. <laughs> in New York, you don't really help. You step around or over. That's what you do in New York. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a nice thing, but the, the amount uh, the, the amount of times you see that happening, you 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 stop helping and start moving forward, you know? And I don't know if that's a good instinct, but it's the instinct of a New Yorker. Is 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 it's not it's not how do I help this man? It's how do I get home faster? That's just how we think, dude. I don't know why. Probably because of just years of this 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 city is cruel, dude. <laughs> But this guy was like still enough and enough of us were like staring at him that I was like, sh maybe we should, like we were pulling to Grand Central. I was like, maybe we should tell the train operator. Maybe we should do something. And then the guy rolls out of his seat onto the ground. And then when that happens, I really start being like, maybe we should help this guy. Like, how, sh how do I help this guy? Like, uh, like, like, should I call 911? What should I do? And then the guy starts like move like moving around like a like just a guy who is asleep and the you could feel the whole train car going from concern to being like bro get the fuck up <laughs> The whole train car you could really feel the like a deep concern switch into bro I don't even think this guy is high dude I think he's just fucking being a dick <laughs> I don't know if he was. I don't know what his prerogative was. I would say he probably was. I mean, he was either a huge asshole or struggling from addiction. I'm a lean towards struggling toward struggling with addiction. That's probably what it was. So, but the the specific the specific moment of him just like moving like a normal like the way you've seen your girlfriend turn over in her sleep really just it, it gives you a jolt of like oh come on it, you know it makes me my dad for a second it really it turns me into my father for a second like oh this is your fault <laughs> which isn't me it's not how i feel how i feel is like oh man i like what happened to this guy like could we help him but there is in my dna my father feeling very much the opposite feeling very much like Get it, get the fuck off the train, you know, and that, you know, and his little just his, his, his getting more comfortable on the ground made, made a, that thought come out of me, <laughs> which in retrospect, it's like, if you're going to be sleeping on the ground, you should be getting comfortable. I'm getting mad at that. I'm getting mad at a guy trying to get cozy, dude. I shouldn't be mad at that. There's nothing wrong with getting cozy, dude. In retrospect, it probably wasn't even... He probably just slid off the... He probably rolled over onto the... Onto the... Um, onto the floor because those... The, I, I bet you the subway floor is more comfortable than the subway seat, dude. Lying on it? That's a tight squeeze. He needed to fucking spread out, bro. I don't know how fucked up his high was. Maybe his high was so fucked up that he needed to get cozy on the ground, dude. I shouldn't be so aggressive. But, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm hope he's okay. <laughs> it's just weird. It's, I've talked about this on the podcast before. It's like, you, you just see something like that and then you, and then you get off the train and you're like, all right, well, I got, I got to see, uh, how do how how do like how do I get the podcast done before I go see my girlfriend? <laughs> You're like, all right, that was really awful and that fucking sucks. All right, 
do I go to this party tonight? What do I do? I don't know. It just makes you feel a little psychotic. But that's the nature of a city, isn't it? Is, uh, you know, you're confronted with awful shit. Dude, I never saw a homeless person ever in my hometown. They exist, dude. I th- dude, here's the thing. Homeless people people are like there's more there, there's more homeless people in cities cuz it's easier to be homeless, but there are some high-level homeless in the suburbs, dude. There was this dude who was just like camping in the woods. I've know I've seen multiple camps in the woods growing up that were not people uh uh like they, it wasn't people like camping for the weekend. It was like, it was literally, now that I think about it, it was dudes who owned a car and they didn't like sleeping in that anymore. So they got a tent and now they live in the woods, dude. At least that's what it seemed like to me. Damn, dude. Imagine living in the woods, bro. Ah, dude, that sucks. <laughs> that fucking sucks, man. Ah, dude. That's a nightmare, dude. Just being... Ah, that must be awful, dude. Get it? But Yeah. Dude, and then once you're on the street, dude, it must be impossible. It must be so hard. Dude, I can't even imagine that. I've been, I mean, I've been, I've been in like bad situations. I've, I felt like I was at the bottom of a pit, but I can't imagine being even deeper in that. And that's what being on the street is, is being so goddamn deep into a hole that it's impossible to climb the fuck out. Dude, and bad habits are hard to break. And sometimes you see just like a fucking 60 year old guy ruined by bad habits and 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 probably learned bad habits like like habits that weren't just uh you know learned by him but that were thrust upon him by family or whatever the fuck and now he's like suffering the consequences of those habits dude i don't know like i said i don't know anything about politics but solving homelessness seems like a real tough thing to fix <laughs> That seems like a real hard thing to fix. Um, But I hope that it does get fixed. I don't fucking know. Anyway, that's the end of the first part. I'll see you in the second part. What's up? I'm back. Yeah, yeah, the state, yeah, the state of the world has just got me thinking about a lot of, like, problems that are, seem unsolvable. And me really thinking, like, how, how would you solve that? Like, how would you, how do you, because I got no fucking clue, dude. And then you start to just be like, does anyone really know how to fucking <laughs> fix anything? The The worse the country gets, the more I'm like, you know, or the worse things get in general. The more I'm like. Maybe just nobody knows how to fix it. <laughs> but that's nihilistic, and I try not to be nihilistic. I'm trying not to be nihilistic, dude. I'm trying to be like, nah, see, someone's got the answers. We'll figure it out, dude. Someone will fix something. Dude. I just keep thinking about that guy's bit. I forget the name of the comedian, but he's got that bit where he's like, uh, it's amazing that we're alive this long and, and, and life still sucks. It's like we keep living longer and life you would think it'd be fun. We keep living longer and it's still it's still hard. It's still tough. It's true, dude. I was saying to my dad, I was like, "Why don't they just w- wipe the national debt?" Here's the thing, I'm too stupid to know if a solution I come up with is would work. You know? Cuz I feel like a lot of times you'll hear somebody uh you'll hear somebody saying like, this is what they got to do about the economy. This is what they got to do about immigration. This is what they got to do about this This is what they got to do about that. But there's no, there's no extra layer of the guy, of the guy being like, well, I don't actually fucking know. I'm just spitballing. (laughs) 
I am almost at all times spitballing, dude. That's most people. That's me. That's definitely me. And that's that's I would say that's the majority of people is believing very strongly in in the right way to fix something, but then having no real idea if if that has any basis or utility in reality. <laughs> like I kept saying to my dad, uh, like why don't they just wipe like like we have a crazy national debt, right? Other countries have debts, I assume. See, I don't even know. I don't even know if we have a national debt. I just know because people say it. Dude, I'm so removed from actual numbers on a sheet of paper. You know what I'm saying? I'm so, and I think that's most people. We're. So, I'm so removed from actual things that I know for a fact. <laughs> but I believe that we have a huge deficit. And I was like, well, why don't we, why does like, if, 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 a, if a bunch of countries have deficits, if every country has a deficit, maybe every country doesn't, but I was like, why don't we just all sit down with the UN and just fucking agree to clear all the debt? And I was saying it to my dad and my dad was like stumped by the idea, but that didn't make me be like, oh, that's a, I stumped my dad who who owned a business made good made a my dad fucking I've said this before I'll say it again my dad fulfilled the American dream okay he started a small business he made a ton of money and he sold that small business and now he's retired at like 63 64 I think he retired when he was 62 he's been retired for a couple of years that's amazing it's incredible he's a smart guy he knows his business well so I'm saying this national, clear all the debt. Let's all just agree to clearing the debt. And my dad is kind of like, well, you can't do that because, oh, wait, well, but wouldn't that, I don't know. And he started thinking about it and he started like assessing it in his brain and he started and he like couldn't think of an argument against that idea. And, and, and. I feel like for some people that would make them be like, yeah, fuck yeah, dude, I'm right. That's yeah, dude, I won, dude. It's a good plan. But for me, the more my dad like accepted it, the more I just was like, oh, fuck my dad's stupid too. <laughs> my dad is dumb, dude. My dad should be able, I was, I kind of said that to my dad, hoping he would dismantle the idea. And instead he was like, I don't know, man. Could they do that? And now I'm like, I'm, we're all dumb. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta say it to somebody else in my family. I gotta say it to somebody else who's smart. I'm going to keep saying that. I like to keep saying ideas that I think would work to more and more smart people until it's, it's made clear to me that my idea is stupid as fuck. But yeah, I've been just thinking about. The problems in the world. I guess that makes sense, dude. When a new president happens, you start thinking about, you know, just just all the all the factors, everything going on. I've been thinking a lot about um. Uh. I I miss the 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 stakes of being young, dude. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like I really miss. People, people are like, well, when you get older, the stakes get higher. And it's like, yeah, the stakes, the stakes get higher in with like, with like real life shit. Like as you get older, you get more responsibilities and then the more responsibilities you have, the greater the stakes. But as the stakes get higher for like more real world shit, the stakes get so low for like the bullshit and I miss I miss stakes the stakes being so high for bullshit you know I miss like being terrified of a woman dude I miss I miss seeing a girl in my class and and having no idea at all how I could even remotely say one word to her let alone get her to have a crush on me like I have a crush on her dude I remember being in preschool and 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 standing there was this book there were these this bookcase uh that was like a circular bookcase that you could like walk into and then it was like in the center of class and you could see through the bookcase you could see through like 
you know, because it was like four bookcases and there were little cracks in between them. And there was like one entrance. But I remember looking through the crack between two bookcases at this girl I had a crush on. And like, it was the cra- it was the craziest, most psychotic feeling I've ever had in my life. I was like terrified. I was intrigued. I was like, I was like happy. I was angry. I was like every emotion was coursing through me as I looked at this other kindergartner. I was a kindergartner looking at another kindergartner being like, I'm feeling every emotion that, 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 that exists and I don't know how to comprehend any of it. And now I'm just paralyzed staring at her through a crack in a bookshelf. I miss that, dude. I miss that, dude. Even if I was single right now, I don't, I don't, I've, I've, I've never, I don't, I cannot, I would never, it's not happening. <laughs> I'm never going to look at a person the same way again. I'm just not. But for better or worse, you know, I mean, if you're an adult and you look at somebody and you have that psych, you psychotically don't understand your emotions. That's not good, bro. You're old enough where that means you're, you're going to kill somebody. <laughs> you don't want to be stunted mentally. That means you're stunted mentally and you should be somewhere to, 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 you know, figure out social interactions so you don't choke a lady to death accidentally. You know, you got to. Those feelings, but that's what I'm saying. I miss having the feelings that are appropriate for a child, you know, because you still kind of have them. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I miss falling down as a, as a five-year-old and, and thinking the world was falling and crying and not being able to take the embarrassment of everyone around you. I miss falling down and everyone looks at you and you're and you can't handle it so you start sobbing. Because now if I fall down, see now I don't have it when I fall down. I have it when I just like think about life. I have that same feeling that I did when I was getting up from the ground and I wasn't sure if I was hurt. That same feeling still happens, but it happens when I just sit here and think. <laughs> But the difference is when I was that little five-year-old, I would cry. And and now when I sit here and think, I just go, all right. <laughs> I don't sit here and go, ah, that would be nice, dude. But it's like you're so jaded, like you're just so... You've, you've so encountered so many things that it's like, dude, when I meet an older man who's nervous, it bothers me. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like uncomfortable. When I meet somebody who's like 45 and afraid to talk to someone, it, it, it bothers me to my core, dude, because I feel so jaded by life <laughs> that it bothers me to see someone older than me nervous. What is there to be nervous about, dude? Like, you might have some sort of nervousness in you. Like, it's okay to be nervous. Like, there's still th- going to be things in life for me that will make me nervous. But you handle it differently, you know? It's like you're nervous. You're, nerv- you're nervous. In sixth grade, you're nervous trying to talk to the cr- the girl you have a crush on. And your hand is shaking, Right? But when you're a freshman, you're still nervous and your your heart's pounding out of your chest, but your hand isn't shaking as much. You know what I'm saying? Like, like there's levels to it. Like you get less and less nervous because you encounter more and more scenarios where that thing you were so nervous about ended up okay. Even if it ended up really bad, you survived it and now it's fine. So if, if somebody is is their hands are trembling talking to another woman that's a person who didn't who didn't experience enough bad scenarios and so now I'm uncomfortable bro Do you know what I'm saying? I might just be sounding like a cunt right now. It's 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 been known to happen. Sometimes I just sound like an asshole. I just miss it, dude. I miss it. I miss fucking 
I miss looking forward to shit, looking forward to like video games that were coming out, dude. Dude, I used to, when video games were coming out, the stakes were so high for me wanting to play it that I would, I would think I would literally have the thought, I hope I don't die before that comes out. Like I just, I just got to make sure I don't die before that comes out. And now I'm like, I just got to make sure I don't die because it's, it'll, you know, it's going to make people sad. <laughs> Which for some reason, you know, I miss, I miss, I miss the, 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 the luxury of, of not living in reality of, of, I miss, I miss being a child and not knowing what re what reality is. Cause the reality is as a child, it's even more horrifying if you die, right? If, if I die, like I'm thinking I just got to make sure I don't die until this video game comes out. And I had no, I had no even thought in my brain of like, well, I got to make sure I don't die as a child because it'll destroy my family's lives. <laughs> It'll literally like tear a hole. It will change all of their lives forever in a negative way. Um, I'm just, I, I wasn't thinking that at all. I was just thinking like, bro, I got it. Like, are you really going to climb the walls in Assassin's Creed like that? <laughs> Damn, dude. Can I really go behind cover like that in Gears of War, bro? I got to, I got to live long enough to play test that and be like, holy shit. These game mechanics are as cool as I, as a, they seem they would be. Holy shit. You can jump into that hay bale, bro. Thank God I'm alive to experience this. But the reality is, if I died before Assassin's Creed came out, my, my mom might kill herself, dude. <laughs> my mom might not have made it, you know? But now, you know... Honestly, the stakes for death is, are become lower and lower as you get older. Un but unless uh, really what I'm what I'm illustrating is like I need to I need you know I don't know unless you have a kid <laughs> unless you have a kid and maybe this is why people end up having kids dude I don't know if that's a good reason or not I don't know sometimes I do think that though when people talk about like, um, what is the meaning of life? Like, what is the purpose of life? It's like, I mean, the per, but isn't the, like, isn't that an obvious answer? It's, it is to have kids, right? It is to procreate. Isn't that the, like, that's like kind of the point of every species is like to exist, to be alive, to make sure it doesn't end. And so maybe that's all I'm really experiencing is as I get older and I don't have children, you more and more experience like, well, then why, 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 I don't really, what am I even doing? <laughs> what am I even really doing right now? You know, maybe that's why people end up having kids. They, they feel their, 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 their. Life be feeling more and more selfish as they go on. I don't know. I have no idea. I really don't. But I'm trying to figure it out, you know? Well, what I'm saying is, I don't know. I'm saying like the the reality of, 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 of if I die, my, my, my girlfriend and my mom will be very upset is way less fun than I like Halo 3 is coming out. <laughs> and I'm nostalgic. For, I miss that, dude. I miss uh, Halo 3 coming out being more important or more the priority in my brain than than you know how much people in my life will cry. <laughs> Dude, I'm so glad I laugh at awful shit, dude. I'm really glad about that. I am. I mean, sometimes it's it's created moments where people uh, think I'm being a, a psycho, but it's it's 
Because you think about all this. I can't imagine thinking about like dark shit like this and then not laughing about it. Because if I didn't laugh about it, then it would just be dark as fuck. And what? And then what are you doing? Then you're walking around with all that shit in your brain, dude. Dude, sometimes I'll meet people my age who like have abandoned laughing. They've abandoned it. I don't know what age they abandoned it. I don't. I don't know if their whole life they've not been someone who laughs. But like the older I get, the more people in my life just like they laugh less and they suck more, you know? I don't know. Maybe that's part of what I'm talking about. Scared of losing things to look forward to. Because then you just become kind of a cunt. If you just, if you have nothing to look forward to in life, if you have no, if it's just sadness and bitterness and shittiness, if it's just me going, ah, what do they know? Then it's like, what the, f I'm going to be an asshole. I'm going to be, I don't know. I can look at my dad as an example of a guy who got so concentrated into being an adult and working that he he became so unfun as a as a guy so just angry and now that he's retired and and living an easier life he's he's like so nice to be around he's like uh, like if we have a political argument he's not angry dude my dad the other day he said something to me and it was so beautiful that i wish I wish, I don't know. If you have a bad relationship with your parent, like, just just try and give it time. Because my dad I used to have hard, angry arguments with about a lot of shit. But I always, like, stayed steadfast and I always made sure my dad knew that, like, I don't, I, I would always be like, Dad, I'm arguing with you about this because I love you, not because I hate you. And my dad, the other day, he was like, who are you going to vote for? And I was telling him who I might vote for. And he was like, ah, you're going to vote for them. And then we were, like, arguing about it a little bit. And then my dad goes... You know what? Vote for whoever makes you happy. And I was like, damn, dude, like five years ago, that sentence would have never... My dad would have been yelling at me until it felt bad in the room. And then we would go our separate ways. And then a day later, my dad would be like, I'm sorry. It's just I get worked up. And now in the moment, we we had like a, an argument that was perfectly respectable and kind of fun. And then he and then he very gently was like, well, whatever makes you happy. So, you know, don't give up, bro. <laughs> if your parent is is tough to be around, I mean, there's hope, I guess. I don't know. At least there wasn't my situation. You never know. Some people's parents are not understanding. At the bottom of my parents, is I've always been like loving, understanding people. And so that's why I've never... I've never even thought to be like, fuck these guys, I'm done. Um, yeah. But also maybe that's, I said it earlier in the podcast that maybe, you know, my dad, they get, they, you know, we get their bad stuff. But as you get older, they get some of your good shit, you know? If you take stuff, stuff from them, and you're like, I, like if you have get bad shit, you, you, bad habits or bad instincts from them, and you try and change them, and you're present for your parent to see to see if your if your parent can look at you and see you act in a way that they wouldn't, that they kind of wish that they could, they I feel like they change, dude. I don't know. All I know is that my hands hurt more. <laughs> As I get older, my hands hurt more, dude. They hurt, bro. I was asking my dad if uh, 
if it's normal for your hands to hurt. I was trying to explain, like, my hands will get, they'll tense up. Um, and he was like, oh, well, that would happen to me when I was working a lot. When I was, because he was a butcher. He'd be like, when I cut meat all day, my hands would hurt. And he's like, is it, is it in the joints? Is it in your wrists? And I'm like, no, it's just like in my fingers and my palms sometimes. And he's like, ah, oh, that's just, I think that's just like muscle aches. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he's like, well, what, what do you get them from? And I'm like, let's not talk about it. <laughs> My dad's getting muscle aches from chopping meat. I'm getting it from fingering people. <laughs> Did I talk about this already on the podcast? I can't, I can't remember if I talked about it last week. Bro, that's a real thing, dude. A moment where I was like, I'm getting older is is it hurt my hand to finger a person. My, like, my arm, my hand, like, it was like an effort. It was like a physical sacrifice to make a woman come. <laughs> like, I was really, it was more than just me mentally wanting to do it. I was like, damn, dude, my hand, I don't, my hand might get stuck like this if I keep going, but she's not there yet, and I gotta push through, dude. Dude, you know what? And that's why, that's why, dude, that's why it makes me mad, dude. Dude, now I'm thinking about it. I've had people like, be like, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't physically do that. Like I had somebody who straight up be like, I'm not physically capable of like, jerking you off till you come i'm not physically capable of it not like not like i like i can't do it like 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 i don't want to do it like i like i just am repulsed but it was like it was like no i would love to be able to do it but like physically i can't pull off that maneuver what dude meanwhile i'm over here years later fingering somebody and my hand is is on fire and i'm and i'm pushing through to make the person feel good and i'm thinking back to when I was, but you know what? At the same time, she was, I think she was 30. So you know what? Maybe her hand just fucking hurt, dude. <laughs> Maybe her hand hurt, dude. Maybe her hand really was hurt. And Maybe she, her hand really hurt and she didn't want to be like, listen, I'm old now, dude. I can't do it. I'm fucking, you don't understand. You will, you will understand the pains I feel one day. Listen, in my, in my prime, I could pull this off. But now, as an old lady, I'm choosing between the physical sacrifice. I'm 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 weighing the 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 you know you coming versus my hands feeling good, and I'm leaning towards my hands feeling good. Okay, I gotta I gotta do some work later, bro. I gotta t type on the keyboard. <laughs> oh shit. Meanwhile, I'm like, let's see if my hand breaks, dude. <laughs> Listen, dude, how how much do I need these fingers, bro? <laughs> bro, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, yeah. What else? What else did I fucking write down, dude? Yeah. Well, that's a little. That's kind of dark to talk about. <laughs> that's a little too dark to talk about. Well, I only got like what, two minutes left in the pod. Um, it's a little too late in the pod to talk about World War Three. I wrote something down about World War Three. I mean, it wasn't that crazy? I, I just was right. I was just thinking about it the other day. I was like, because you don't. It was like terrifying for me as a kid, the draft, the idea of the draft. And so that fear has always been in me of like, fuck, dude, I don't want to get drafted for a war that I don't want to be a part of. But now. But then you don't realize you age out of being drafted. So now I'm too old to be drafted. And now I'm like, but then if there's a world war. What do I just watch it happen? <laughs> Is that what happens when you're too old to be drafted? You just fucking 
sit there and go, I hope, I hope, I hope. Hope the bombs don't drop here. Like, is that what you do? I used to be, I was terrified of getting drafted to fight in a war that I didn't want to be a part of. But now I'm a little bit terrified of, of a war happening and, 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 and me just sitting there like a fucking, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to feel bad if, if, if the draft happens again, I'm going to feel like shit. Like, damn dude. Like why? Like these guys, fuck. I don't have to do it. Like, I'm going to be playing Call of Duty Black Ops while someone, while an 18-year-old is, like, robbed of that opportunity. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I don't know. It seems crazy. Anyway, let's hope there's no draft. Let's hope there's no World War III. Let's, let's, let's be positive. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, if you're feeling crazy, if you're feeling shitty, I get it. Don't worry. Uh... You know, things will be okay. Things will be okay. Um, yeah. Anyway, thank you for listening so much. Uh, I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Jake, you're an idiot. Jake, you don't make.